Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Good to see all of you. And happy Father's Day to all of you. There is a little gift for each father as you're leaving this today. Check it out. There's sushi, yogurt, bread, a pie was back there. Um, so check all that out before you leave. Discipleship resumes today at 5 o'clock. For those of you participating in that, um, thank you for supporting Alternative Medical Clinic. And um, today's the day that you're supposed to return the bottle full of coins. And like, if you're like me and forgot to bring your bottle, you can return it any time this week. You can bring it back this next week. It doesn't give you a day. So I've got, I got five days. you got four days to figure it out. Friday, the office is closed. So get it back by then. And men that... Um, it's open to any of the men, but men that participate in the Saturday morning um, Bible study times. This week is 500 Heroes. It's a AMC event just for men. Saturday, 8 to 10. At All right. You ready to worship? Let's do it. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your great gift. Father, I pray that we will honor you this morning as we worship we glorify your name. In Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, brother. How we love you, Lord. Sing unto the King of Kings. Father, we love you. We worship and adore.
our sovereign God. effective men of God, then we must know and acknowledge that every grace and every virtue proceeds from God alone, and that not even a good thought can come from us except it be of Him, our great God. To seek Him with our whole heart and to love Him more deeply. More about Jesus would I know, more of His grace to others show more of his saving fullness see more of his love who died for me more more about Jesus more more about Jesus more of his saving fullness see more of his love sing those often, but isn't that our heart's desire to know our Lord more deeply, more intimately, and to seek Him with our whole heart? You know, that's, it sounds a little like work, doesn't it? But it's one of those investments, like in a relationship, like any relationship, that it only gets sweeter and sweeter and deeper and uh, more fulfilling, but more of our Lord, to know Him more deeply. We have a Father who loves us, who understands us better than we understand ourselves, and He's worthy of all praise and devotion and gratitude. I heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night when you tell
See you. 
Not in my own strength and in my own might am I made right with you. Not in my own strength and my own might, right, Father, and might and power do I accomplish anything that truly has the, the depth and meaning that you desire our lives to have. Father, because to honor you, may that be our greatest joy, to honor you and to be a blessing to others and to love the way that Jesus loves. And Father, to seek you with our whole heart and being. Lord, I, I, need, I need your help even to begin to consider doing that. But in each and every day, Father, I pray that we would draw closer to you. Father, that we would live lives of surrender and lives of obedience. Father, lives in, and walking in the reality of your presence and by the power and the might of your abiding Holy Spirit, Father God. Bless my brothers and sisters here today. If there are those that in this day have yet to truly surrender to you, may this be the day, Lord. May this be the day that they say, not my will, but thine. You must be, become greater, O oh God, in our hearts and lives, and we must become less. It goes against every grain of our culture and civilization. But Father, you say that the path that we follow to you is the path that leads to joy, the path that leads to hope, the path that leads to eternity of celebration and worship. And Father, um, and it, the, the, that which you've prepared for those that love you that goes beyond our imagination that goes beyond anything that we can even comprehend in our present state. So, Father God, speak to our hearts through your word in this day. Thank you for Jack being here as he shares the message you've laid on his heart. May we be open to you, O oh God, in all that we do. We give you praise now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Welcome back to me. Come back. Um, thank you, Stephen Paco. Uh, we're going to be all over the place today, uh, and so uh, if you have won at least three Bible drill competitions, uh, feel free to turn to these passages. I'll give you a little bit of heads up for uh, Ephesians 5 for this one, uh, and uh, 
I want to be, say something different than most people say. Instead of Happy Father's Day, is Blessed Father's Day. Amen. Blessed Father's Day. Uh, something that uh, got into, under my skin and into my heart while we were back and uh, visiting uh, relatives, mostly past relatives, and my friends, as I don't have many relatives back there, but I got a few relatives. You know what a first cousin once removed is? That's your mama's first cousin. And I went to see one of those, and I have a one first cousin remaining, and and uh, there's another first cousin that we think might still be alive, but nobody knows where he is, even on BenVerified.com and advanced background checks. He hasn't been seen since 2004. Uh, his name is Jimmy Short. So if you run across Jimmy Elmer Short, James Elmer Short, let me know. Half brother that I think is deceased now. Didn't even know about him. We never did figure out who he was, but I think he's deceased now. Uh, and so there was a little bit of soul searching going on in preparation for Father's Day. And I think I've told you all before, haven't I, that I've been plagued throughout my life with seasonal depression. And and uh, one of the times that it used to get me was between uh, right when school let out and then after after or right before school was going to be out for the summer, and then a couple of weeks into the summer, I started feeling better. And it wasn't until I was grown, about 2003, that I figured out uh, that I was in my 40s. I had finally figured out that it was Mother's Day and Father's Day that was tripping me up. And the period, lead, right of the day, a few days before Mother's Day, because I wasn't with my mother or my father most of my, or a lot of my growing up. And some of the time, I wasn't with either one of them. But with my dad, hardly ever, ever since I was a year and a half old. Uh, so a couple of pictures here. Uh, this, uh, you've never heard of this place. I'm standing at Thornhill Gap is what it's called. That's the official correct title for it. It's north of Bean Station. Never heard of that either, I bet. <laughs> Near Tate Springs, yeah. old man Bean was a hunting partner of Davy Crockett. And that's how Bean Station became established. And this pass is going across, going toward, about to go over Clinch Mountain, uh, the Clinch River. And it's looking back toward, uh, over the, Ho uh, the Holston River in East Tennessee, and that is Cherokee Lake in front of you. And way off there in the distance, right there is... Cherokee Bridge, or Cherokee, the bridge over Cherokee Lake that Pat and I know well. That, that's how much we know it well. But the Pat's family used to drive over this, that, that, that spot, right past that spot, often, like every other week or so, going back to see her grandparents who lived in Thornhill. And uh, I think Granger County is the name of the county. But uh, anyway, we were, I was up there with some of my friends. Now, this one is north of, this lake is, and, and, and this place is north of us. But lots of lakes are in there. Norris Lake is even north of this. Next one. That right there is out of my first cousin once removed. I won't tell you his name because they don't want strangers coming up there looking, uh, looking at this beautiful scenery. Way down here in the background is Mount Leconte, which is the highest uh, peak in the Smokies. Uh, but this is... Uh, Holster, or, or uh, this is Douglas Lake, and that's the French Broad River. The Nolichucky has just flown, flowed into it, and, and it's going that away. A friend of mine on Facebook, when I posted that, he says, there's something wrong with me. All I could think of was how hard it would be to mow that yard. <laughs> uh, but isn't that a beautiful scenery? And that's Pat's Aunt Sue's nitro that I had borrowed. Uh, but I did a panorama. But I, I show you these two. One, to show you that Tennessee's beautiful, but they don't know what mountains are. Because <laughs> the highest mountain there is a hill out here. I mean, and our, our, our mountains are big and tall and got lots of rocks and granite and snow and glaciers. And I'm talking about all that stuff up north. But even the, the mountains down here are big compared to where we're from. Uh, and then you look at the contour lines and you're looking at them and, well, that's not high, but uh, out here, it, they're, they're back for back there. Uh, I mean, there aren't any waterfalls between that and the Mississippi River all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. It's, it's just 
nice, calm rivers. And there's some dams that complicate things. But, uh, but, a, but the, 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 the spiritual reason I put that in there is these two lakes kind of form the northern and southern boundaries of, I, between those two lakes, I went around looking for a day, somebody to be a father figure to me. Mm -hmm. And I was not introspective enough to understand that that was a hole in my life and I was looking for somebody. And so I, I talk about this, uh, at least in passing, every Father's Day. Because a lot of guys, we're not introspective, and if we didn't have a good relationship with our dad, we don't even know what we're missing. And if we did, we don't even want to try to find out. But men, it's one of the most important things that you can do, and it's one of the most important things you must do if you're going to have children. And if you've got, if you've got children and grandchildren and they're going to reproduce, you've got to tell those kids that they need father figures in their, in their life. Even if your son or daughter doesn't even want to talk to you, pray for somebody to get to be that kind of guy. Folks, there's probably, I don't know, some percentage of us that we know what it's like. As a little kid, we remember being three years old or four years old and crawling up on our daddy's lap when we were scared or nervous or something like that, and he hugs us and protects us. Or there's a dog coming at us and dad snatches us up and holds us up over his head and puts us down while he kicks the dog out of the way. And you feel so safe and so loved. I see tears squirting from a couple of you already. You know what it feels like. Or you wish you knew. Listen, your heavenly father is that kind of father. He is the model with a capital M. And, and for the dads, listen to me. <clears throat> is it is in the Father's heart. Now, I'm not trying to be all positive confession and all that stuff right now, but he shows us this clearly in his word that his heart is with the Father who wants to be the best dad that he can be. It's no accident that Paul gets over into the New Testament and he talks about Abba, Father. Abba. You know how come, did anybody know that most kids say their dad say dad before they say mom. You know, mom is the center of the little baby's world, but he says it because it's it, for some reason the dad probably got him to call him the the B sound, the ba 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 or abba 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 is an easier sound to make than mom, mama. Uh, but but Paul talks about that we're to see the Lord as our Father. Jesus did too. Remember when he taught his disciples? He said, teach us how to pray. What did he say? He says, just talk to the Father, right? And when he says, when you pray, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven. Listen to me. For some people, you need to understand this. And I don't know that I knew this, how, how, how central it was. I mean, I, it may not be the, the very middle point because the gospel is the middle point. The re revelation of Jesus is Lord. <clears throat> and then he died on the cross and paid for our sins. But what that does for us as we trust in him is what that does is we become that God the Father forgives us and adopts us as his children. And so then our central identity becomes a child of God. A son of God, a daughter of God. The daughter of the Most High King. Ladies, you belong to Jesus. You are a daughter of the Most High God. The Lord of the universe. And he is going to superintend you so that you are going to come home to him someday and be his child forevermore. And guys, the same is true for you. Is he is going to bring you and draw you all the way into glory. He's going to take care of you. He's going to deliver you. You are a gift uh, uh, from the Father to the Son, the Son to the Father, is that you're going to be with the Lord forever as His child. Uh, and some of us, me included, what we do is we project what we know about our earthly father onto God the Father and we, we, we begin to think, without realizing, we think, well, he's distant, or he's absent, or he's angry at me, or 
He's holding a grudge. He's making me do things I don't want to do. He wants, he's doing everything in your life for your good, for your blessing. Those commandments that he gave us, they're for your protection. Amen. You know that, right? They're not so that you can't have fun. As if, you, if, if, if sinning is fun for you, you that just means you're, we're infected with the, the problems, right? Okay, all that having been said, <clears throat> as I tell some of the guys this morning about being the best dad that you can be, ladies, there's a lot of this in here that applies to you. Just like remember when we were at Mother's Day a month ago, is, is a lot of the, the message applied uh, to, to the fathers. <clears throat> and number one. And number two, I want you to notice that when we're talking about being a good dad, there's more to it than this. I can't get it all done in, in, in one, one, one Lord's Day sermon, right? But, but you will notice that a lot of this just has to do with learning how to become and to live as a follower of Jesus, as a Christian. Is that takes care of 85% of fatherhood, motherhood, being a good husband, being a good wife, being a good employee, is if I live as I'm living unto the Lord, is it takes care of all my other relationships. It sounds a lot like when Jesus said, when they asked him who, what the most important commandment was, is what? Thou shalt live, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like to the verse, live, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. And so all that comes to you, loving people, your spouse, your children, your parents, are just... The, the subset of loving the Lord. And so here we go. Father God, bless your word as it goes forth, Father. May I decrease and you and your word increase in the hearts of these precious people, Father. Change us, Father. We come here for life change, not just to, <coughs> not just to uh, check a blank or check a box. Make mother-in-law proud, whatever it might be, Father. But Lord, we come because we're hungry for you, our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. <clears throat> so, in Ephesians chapter five, I got some of the verses that are on the slide, and then I might expand some. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Now, wait a minute. What's that got to be do with that? Okay, look at verse 1 very carefully, the first words. Therefore, be imitators of God. You hear what Paul has just told us? He says, God the Father has given us himself as our example. See, we're to imitate our examples. God the Father is our example that we are to imitate as dads. You see that? I mean, it's for all people, male and female, but especially in the dad mode, in the dad role, in the father role. <clears throat> and, and to be imitators as beloved children. Is, is, has you ever noticed, have you, anybody here, any, any, any wives, have you noticed that your husband walks like his dad? No? You don't know his dad, right? Oh, I see that hand. Nancy raised her hand back there. I was walking across the, 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 the parking lot behind my grandfather toward the car one time, and while I get in the car, my grandmother got her head thrown back, going, whoo, 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 whoo. That's the way she laughed. Uh, it sounded like a chimp. <laughs> Big, pretty good size, heavy set lady. Laughed like a monkey. <laughs> But anyway, what she had noticed was that she looking in the rearview mirror on the passenger side as we were, is that as I was swinging my right leg like my grandfather did. And I, and, and I thought, that's not flattering. <laughs> I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that word at the time, but that's the kind of thought that I had. But, but you know, as, 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 as dads are being good examples to their kids, Guys need examples more than girls do. We really do. There's a saying among the, 
psychologists, especially the Christian ilk, uh, that you uh, that femininity cannot beget masculinity. In other words, a single mom has a harder time raising her son into a man than a single dad does raising a little girl into a woman. Because that little girl, she she just she she gets things and you know she's got this sixth sense. You know, you know everybody knows what I'm talking about. We don't well we don't know exactly what I'm talking about, but we know it's there. Right? And she figures stuff out. She finds things. She's like Eve, you know, she found the apple. Uh, and then here's look at verse 2 walk in love live your life as a loving person as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God <clears throat> and here I want to give you the three main roles of a dad a husband and a dad you ready? first thing your role is to provide that is to provide a safe place, a clean place, a dry place for him to live. Second thing is to, and, 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 and more, but to be the provider. The second thing is to be their protector. Is they know that they have a safe place and a safe environment and they know that they're safe. And then the third thing is to prepare. That's the part that we fall down on because we guys, we really need some help. We need somebody, an older man, to tell us, hey, what are some of the important things that you're teaching your son? I don't know what I'm supposed to. Well, have you thought about it? No. Well, have you thought about this and this and this and this? And by the time you know, you're finished talking, you realize, oh, wow, being a dad is a lot more complicated than I thought it was. It's not just going to work and bringing home a paycheck. Uh, I figured I figured a lot of stuff out about a year or two too late in my father, but I didn't have a good father figure, consistent father figure growing up. The safest I ever felt was crawling up onto the lap of a man who had been paralyzed since World War II. He was the manliest man I was ever around, and he was a manly man, but he couldn't he couldn't walk, and that that makes a difference in your psyche. So the first thing, go ahead. Nancy, is set the example. Is you be a good example for your sons and your daughters and your wife. Now, skipping on down, I want to accelerate here and leave out a few verses. Skipping on down, go ahead to the next one, is also in Ephesians 5, down in verse 25, is husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it or for her. That is, dads, the best thing you can do for your children is to love their mother. Amen. Love their mother. And folks, let's not pretend here is love their mother, not some other woman while your kid grows up with somebody else. Right? Because your kid was was fathered by another woman that you didn't marry. Is 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 the husband and the wife, the mother and the father, or the mother and the father of that little kid, that kid has a tremendous advantage over other children. Doesn't mean that mom can't do a good job. We have examples right here in our congregation I could show you that shine as exception. One, is, one precious lady is present with us today. But, but it's a lot harder. So be encouraging your children and your grandchildren. About that. Set the example. Is men, set the example that you're loving your wife so that your son will learn that he's got to love his wife mm -hmm. and, and for the daughter so that she'll know that she needs a man who's going to love her like that. And the next one is uh, Deuteronomy. This one is, uh, we're going to be here a while. Deuteronomy chapter, no, we're, no, we're not. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I got to, I got to get you out of here earlier. Uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6. Watch this. The, notice I got some highlighting here, or bolding. These words which I am commanding you today, these commandments, shall be in your heart, and you shall what? Teach them diligently to your children. This is part of that third P, the preparation. Remember? 
provide, protect, and prepare is, is we're to prepare our children to face the world and to, look, to, to begin to know God and to love God. And go ahead and go to the next one. Yeah, yeah here you go. Is teach them to know the Lord's expectations. What does the Lord ex expect of us? To walk before me and be ye perfect, that is, or, or holy or separate, is teach them to know the Lord's expectations. That God has expectations for them. And the whole chapter there that, we, that I'm going to not go into right now, but for you to perhaps digest, is, is he's making a big deal of obey me. Is I know what's best for you. I want you to do things my way so that life will go well for you. If you don't do things my, my way, bad things will happen to you. And it's not that God comes after us. Have, have anybody ever noticed that you made decisions and just the consequences of those decisions just blew up in your face? You, God didn't have to come chase you down, right, and shoot you, right? Is, is You did that to yourself, and you know you did it to yourself. And how many people do you know, like as I do, that they've done things that have ruined their lives? As I know lots of people. As when I was growing up, folks, I remember. I remember when I was like eight or nine years old having this thought of, wow, it's, it's like people to the left and to the right of me getting struck by lightning, and here I'm still standing. It's when, you're, when you grow up in three households where there's huge marital strife, <coughs> um, and counting my grandparents, there's some American strife even there. They, they hung in there together all the way. Uh, but but you, 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 when, you're, when you got all this strife around and they're fussing with each other and they're kind of ignoring you, you get the idea that you got to figure things out on your own. Is who's there for me? Kind of feel like uh, the recon or the SEALs or the special forces. You're all alone and nobody's coming. You don't want your children to feel that way, ever. Not even for a fleeting moment. And then the next one, uh, John 17. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Now, we go ahead to the next one. Remember, the, earth, the last bullet that I gave you was teach them to know the Lord's expectations. Look at the difference here. This one is teach them to know the Lord himself. Uh, this is probably the most profound difference between Pastor Foley's preaching and teaching and mine. A lot of people here don't know who Pastor Foley was. He was the pastor that preceded me. And he talked me into coming here, and I fell in love with the congregation. And after a while, he voted on me and said, okay, yeah, you can serve as our pastor. Uh, but he and Pat and I had served together for two years up in Oceanside, uh, years before, from 88 to 90. And then 95, after going to up in Central California, and then back to D.C., and then coming back here. No, I'm sorry. We came back here in 99, not 95. So nine, nine, almost 10 years later, uh, we, Pastor Foley and Pat and I got back together here. But, but, but I emphasize, know ye the Lord. Is don't spend your time in the second grade level of knowing factoids about God. Get to know Him. The problem with that is when you begin to know him, people, when you talk about it, people tend to look at you like you got an extra hole in your head. Because you have got, you do have an, an, a sensing of God's presence in your life, and you do know him. His Holy, the here, Holy Spirit, you recognize him as real. And something else is, remember this, is, is this, this can be very helpful to you, is there's a lot of people on TV and a lot of churches in the United States, pastors, who talk about the Holy Spirit as if he's an explosive experience that happens inside you. It's an explosive experience. What does God's Word teach? No, 
It's an experience of communion with him. A fellowship, a friendship, an, an awareness of one another's presence, and an abiding appreciation and affection, love for each other. It's not an explosion. It's a communion. You with me? When somebody's teaching explosion to the expense of communion, that is the exception, not the rule. About 4,000 years of Bible history in here. And about 138 of them, about 4,000 years, a miracle occurred in the Bible. That's a pretty small percentage. That's not to say that God can't do miracles today. But he doesn't go by TV evangelists' programming schedule. Or church service times. He doesn't go looking for cameras. Enough said on that? That has to do with perceiving God as your Father. It becomes a very, very big deal. On to Jeremiah 9, 22 and 23. Watch this. Watch it carefully. This, this, this was, I would consider, I'm not a big person to say, what's your life verse? But if I had a life verse for many years, it was these two verses. My grandmother took me to the Baptist Bible bookstore. Say that real fast. In Morristown, Tennessee, in 1974, March 8, 16th, my 18th birthday, and bought me, I don't have it with me right now, Thompson Chain Reference, King James Preacher kind of Bible. And I, I didn't know about the preacher part at the time. I didn't like preachers, uh, pastors. Uh, I thought they were wussies. And I still do for most of them. <laughs> anyway, uh, things came easy for me. I got great grades, tested high, was good in athletics, didn't have a lot of money. Grew up in a poor family. But... Uh, I graduated most likely to succeed from a junior high, most popular from high school. So, you know, people look at me as big man on campus, right? Like Steve was once upon a time. <laughs> and on my 18th birthday, right before I was going to graduate from high school, I started reading my Bible all the way through. And before I graduated, a week, two or three weeks before I graduated, I came across, I got to Jeremiah. I needed this verse so bad to take me down a notch or two and look to the Lord. Amen. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. I thought I was so smart. <laughs> and let not the mighty man glory in his might, that is strength. I was, you know, athletic. <laughs> let not the rich man glory in his riches. That was the one problem I didn't have. But let him who glories, glory in this, that he understands and knows me. See that? Know ye the Lord, not just his expectations. And then he goes on and says, this is what I really want you to know about me. That I am the Lord who exercises loving kindness and justice and righteousness in the earth. What is that for a dad, for his family, to exercise loving kindness and justice and righteousness in his family? That's what our Heavenly Father... And then next, for in these things I delight. He's given us a, some blocks on our position description of being a good dad right there, isn't he? Our God is so good. On to Colossians 3. Now this is for the bad part. Fathers, do not provoke your children. Don't exasperate your children. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, lest they become discouraged. <clears throat> and folks, is sometimes you've got to tell that little monster, you've got to convince that little monster that you're in charge, don't you? I mean, they, you just got to do it. At some point, you got to sit on their head. Um, speaking in hyperbole, don't do that if 
your parents. <laughs> but you gotta get you gotta get a hold of them and show them that they're not in charge. But if we don't do it in an appropriate way, if we don't do it in a decisive way, if we don't do it in a way that is redemptive and clear with clarity and redemptively, that is, to bring us together, is we can cause our children a lot of frustration, exasperation, and even anger and bitterness. Mm -hmm. And so the next point is, go ahead, advance it, is be their inspiration, not a hindrance. Be careful not to be a hindrance to your children. And dads, if we're, you know, if your dad is unfaithful, if he gambles all the money away, he gets evicted, uh, big uh, problems with uh, with uh, substance abuse is is we can compromise what our, what our children need to have for them to feel safe and secure, so that they can grow and thrive and explore the world and feel like they're not having to run for their life all the time. So to Deuteronomy 31, beginning in verse 6, <coughs> this is near the end, obviously, of Deuteronomy. <coughs> and they're talking about going over into the promised land. And they're finally going to go face those giants that they had turned down 40 years ago. And the encouragement from Joshua is, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, it is He who goes with you. He will not fail you, nor forsake you. Now listen to that. that, that we're doing this for the Lord, right? Living as a Christian, living as a follower of Jesus, but specifically the dad role. Remember what I was talking about? Being able to go to your dad and crawl up on his knee and he's protecting you or he picks you up away from the dog or whatever. Um, I remember one time when, uh, when I was a kid, I was down in a, in a barn. I was about seven, six or seven years old. And I was chasing some little pigs. And the mama Sal wasn't around. She was in a different barn. So I could chase them all I wanted to. And I was... Uh, I'd caught one and petted him for a while, and he had kind of calmed down and gotten used to me. So I was trying to work on I was trying to tame him, what I was trying to do. And this one little pig, he wasn't having it. So I chased him over in a different area, and all of a sudden, my right foot stuck to the board that I was stepped across. And I had a big, rusty 16-penny nail came up all the way through my shoe. And I'm looking down at that thing, and I didn't know what to do. I mean... Is it safe to pull my foot up? I tried to pull it up, and oh, man, I didn't think that's a good idea. So I was pretty far away from the house, but all I could do was yell, Papa! I must have yelled his name uh, 20, 30 times, but he came. He heard me, and he came. Or maybe my grandmother, because he was probably a little deaf. But, uh, but he got those fingers under between that board and my shoe, and he pulled that foot off of there. He picked me up and carried me up to the house. And he was being strong and good courage and not being afraid because he knew that his role was to get me off of that nail and get me to somebody that could take care of that foot, right? He stepped up for him. And so the next point here is perfect versus present. Listen, dads. God doesn't expect you to be perfect. He doesn't expect me to be perfect. But what he expects of us is to be present. To be there when the kid needs help. To be there when they think they don't need help. To be there when they don't want your help. To be there for them. To always be there. That, that, have you ever heard that saying? It's, a, it's, a, it's something that kids say nowadays. I love my mom. She's always there for me. You know, that might be a helicopter parent and enabling. You know, we can talk about that some other time. <clears throat> but for the kid to know that they're a phone call away, I know that Pat had that feeling for her dad. That we live far, her pet's parents were perfect in-laws. Is that we live, you know, four or five hundred miles away from them most the whole time. Uh, well, uh, until her mom died. And we spent a year in Okinawa, so we were far, far away then. But for the most part, we were about 400 miles away from them. 
But they would come visit us on the weekend, on some weekends, and we would go see them. But it wasn't any kind of enabling thing. <clears throat> but uh, but they, would, they, they, they didn't push themselves on us and try to force money on us or gifts or anything like that. Just let us learn how to be self-sufficient and grow on our own. Just all the right things. But, but I know that Pat knew that all she had to do was pick up the phone if there was a phone. I didn't have that. <clears throat> but I knew that Mr. Cannon, Pat's dad, was there for me too. Okay, next one is the Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore a man will leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife and they will become one flesh. <clears throat> Men, you got to be that for your wife and your children. And listen to me. At some point, they're going to leave. So next slide. You only have a little time. Just a little time. When you look back on it, 18 years is nothing. And all the empty nesters, a lot of us here say amen, right? Mm -hmm. It's when their kid is three or four years old and they're just sucking the life out of you. <laughs> you can't wait for 18, perhaps. But actually, I think most of us here are mature enough that, that we knew better, right? Mm -hmm. that we, that we, we didn't have that kind of attitude. But I know some people do. <clears throat> that on the, on the theme of you only have a little time, check out this picture. Time is precious. Don't waste it. Before you know it, you're going to be a grandparent. And all of the sand is leaving your hourglass. And that little guy, that little girl, just starting life. And you want to keep building into their lives. You want to keep telling them about Jesus. You want to keep making sure they know that somewhere there is some, no matter what happens, somewhere there's somebody <coughs> that is unreasonably positive about them all the time. And that person is you. You want to be their biggest cheerleader. You want to be the one that's willing to tell them every once in a while. This is my, one of my favorite sayings. I'm not very Christian. Sometimes you've got to be able to tell them that their baby's ugly. <laughs> In other words, sometimes you got to call them on their junk, right? Whatever they're carrying, whatever mistakes they're making, at some point you got to be able to look that kid in the eye and say, Honey, are you sure you're not off track here? Even when they're 30 or 40 years old, they're never too old to mess up. <clears throat> and you never stop parenting. You parent right on in the last thing you say to them before you die is you be there. When we all get to heaven, you be there, kid. I'm going to be looking for you. Uh, that's, uh, that's about all we got time for. <coughs> Now let's, let's, let's very quickly go through these next ones. Understand this. This, is, this. this happened for on the part of baby boomers. It may not be as true. The numbers may be different from the generation that's just grown up now. <clears throat> but if you have a mom who goes to church regularly and a dad who seldom goes, never goes, there's about a 3% probability that that kid will be a church grower when he or she grows up. And if dad never goes, only 2%. In other words, if mom is going to church, taking a kid by herself, a lot of those kids fall away from church. And that doesn't mean they necessarily fall. Going to church and, and, and serving the Lord are not necessarily the same thing, you know. Right? We, we're clear on that. Is right being, what is it? What's the saying? Is just because you're in a garage doesn't make you a car. And because you walk in here, it doesn't make you a Christian. It's, is do you know the Lord? Is he your Lord and Savior? That's what makes you a Christian, a real Christian. A lot of people that think they're Christians they don't know the first thing about it. <clears throat> Look what happens, though, if dad is the one that's driving the train in the spiritual life. Is even if mom goes together with dad, 
and they go regularly, is about a one out of three probability that the kid will continue to serve the Lord. Watch this. If mom sometimes goes to church, but dad takes the kid regularly, the probability that the kid will stay in church later actually goes up. What? And if mom never attends church, but dad still takes that kid regularly, it's almost half the time that kid's going to stay. See, you, is understand this, is dad is the one who sets the tone for the spiritual life of the family. It's just the way God wired us all. You see, if a mom, go, think about it, if your mom takes your kids to church, Moms are more relationship and touchy-feely and take cookies and all of that kind of stuff, right? If dad goes to church, he's with the Bible. More likely. I've watched it. He's 67 now. I was in church the, about the first Sunday, I think I was in the world. It doesn't make me, it doesn't make me a Christian, right? It made me a a guilty sinner who knew better. Uh, but, next one. In spiritual matters, kids tend to take their cues from dad. That doesn't mean that mom shouldn't build into their life spiritually. If she's sitting there telling them Bible stories and teaching them about the Lord and being the model of a Christian virtue, is that tr kid treasures that. But for the kid to be active, serving the Lord and leading his or her family to continue to serve the Lord the rest of their life, dad plays a huge role. That put me in shock when I first saw that. It showed me that, for one thing, is I'm the exception. One of them. One of them. <clears throat> I remember being in a church building with my dad one time in my life and in a church building with my mother I think three times in my life. That's it. It was at my aunt and my grandparents. That, uh, and uh, and I, I don't set myself up to you as, a, as an expert in authority on how to do it. As, as far as I can tell, my children are definitely not serving the Lord well enough to suit me <clears throat> that doesn't mean that they don't believe and they aren't trusting the Lord. But, but they know that they could be serving the Lord more thoroughly. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and I would be lying to you if I said that I'm a better dad than Pat was a mother. No, Matt, I think Pat was a better mother than I was a father and still is in some, some ways. Uh, but I, I learned later she had the good example. All that kind of stuff. And that's not to make excuses. But I do tell you, as a student of God's Word and watching the Lord work in people's lives for all of my life and paying attention, is that dads make a difference. When they engage, they make a difference. Listen to me. The only thing that dads really want, what, what is it that, that makes men uh, makes men's tick. Let's go we'll talk a little psychobabble here. What is it that makes a woman tick? What, what makes her feel some satisfaction? What is the first thing that she needs done? She needs to feel safe. She needs to feel safe. If the person that she's with isn't going to rough, you know, rough her up verbally or uh, tease her or whatever, make her feel bad, uh, talk about her I don't know, the size of her nose or ears or toes or whatever. Somebody that's considerate. What is it that guys want? And Oh, and she wants to be loved. She wants to be appreciated. Mm -hmm. And what is it that guys want? We want to feel significant. If you want to be significant in somebody else's life, that you're making a difference somewhere, that somebody thinks that you matter, his dad is a good place to start. Um... Got other stuff, but uh, I'm, I'm out of time, and I bet somebody here is planning on uh, taking their dad out to eat or 
maybe more likely dad's having to take everybody else out here, right? <laughs> and that's okay, that's good. <laughs> Brother Steve, would you come forward? Lord, uh, Lord, I feel blessed to be in a place where I know that there are some men here that are present that have been good dads already, and that the testimony of their fathers uh, went on, was, led them along and, 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 and made them the men that they were. And I know that uh, that you are ultimately their father and our father. And Lord, some of us, I don't know people's lives and details, but I know that, that all of us, every last one of us, have some regrets about the past or we have some insecurities about the present or the future that we need to know more or we need to do more or how do I start this or how do I start that? Lord, give us the courage to just start with a question, to just build a bridge of friendship if necessary with our children, but bring, bring up whatever's necessary to talk about. And for a lot of us, Lord, it means to talk about serve the Lord, know ye the Lord. And Father, uh, a lot of our kids already know, protect us from nagging, yeah. but Lord, uh, as you <clears throat> are our gracious and kind and merciful <clears throat> Father, who personified a gentleness and forgiveness and mercy in the person of that father of the prodigal son who raised up who his, uh, his robe and he ran to get ahead of those uh, village elders or other men and he ran and grabbed his, his wayward son and, and hugged his neck. Lord, we want to be that kind of guy. Lord, give us hearts what you were saying before, love and kindness, and judgment or justice, <clears throat> and righteousness, Father. And Lord, would you be lifted up in the lives of the people in this congregation? Father, if there's somebody here that's aching because of some kind of fatherhood wound, yeah. Yeah. Lord, would you give some, yeah. some peace and some relief, yeah. maybe even reconciliation. But most of all, Father, that nobody here leaves today. That everybody here does leave, I should say, knowing that you are our Heavenly Father. Amen. And that we have stepped into that to receive Jesus as our Savior. To trust in Him for what the work that He did on the cross to pay for our sins. <coughs> and to cry out to our Heavenly Father, Lord, save me, Lord, forgive me. Amen. And Lord, be my Father. Be my center. Mm -hmm. Be my Lord. Lord, you already are those things. Mm -hmm. So we confess them as true for us and true for all the others and say yes to you. Mm -hmm. May we live our lives. Live our lives knowing that we're coming to be with you, our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. Would you please stand for a couple of verses of invitation? <coughs> if you'd like to come and talk or pray briefly with me, feel free, please do. And even if you don't get that done uh, today, uh, and change your mind later, call me. It's the reason I exist. Brother Steve. Amen. You join with me. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer We often forfeit Oh, what needless pain we bear All because we do not care Everything to God in Trials and temptations. It's 
their trouble anywhere. We should never be discouraged. So take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find? Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Thank you, Lord. Jesus knows our every weakness, so take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? So are we weak and heavy laden? Comfort with a load of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. God is so good. Amen. And he is able. He is able to fill in those holes, those gaps, those voids, those vacancies, hurts, habits, hangups. He can do it. He can heal. Don't bypass him. Don't go around him. Don't run from him. Run to him. Always. Always. You have the biggest sins, the worst week of your life this week thing to do is to not stay home. It's to come together with God's people. And seek the face of the Lord every week, all the time. You come to bless Him, guarantee you, you always are the one that goes away with the blessing. Always. A um, couple of announcements. <clears throat> one of them is we have, uh, uh, what is it? Lovely parting gifts for our participants, for the men. For all the men. All the men. Uh, it's a, one of those pin hoobie toogie bob things and it has a <laughs> flashlight on one end and, and and if you'll come back if you'll figure out this week how to change the battery and you come back next week we'll give you a special prize because <laughs> we've had three of the smartest men in the church working on that thing and it was just not much time to go at it uh, but we weren't able to figure it out other than maybe just it force it off the back huh maybe it takes a hammer yeah maybe it takes a hammer <laughs> but being that it's plastic oh we don't do that but yeah, it may take a hammer. <coughs> uh, what was the other thing there, Miss Pat? Or is there one other thing? I can't remember now. Discipleship yeah, discipleship at five. We have two more sessions, and, and you can come in the middle of the thing. People that have have had to have, have we had one lady watch it by video uh, nearby uh, in the last couple of weeks, or was able to watch at least one of them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, got a blessing out of it. And Wayne Mason, who was here with us when we did it the first night, he took the book back home and just did the workbook by himself without seeing any of the videos. And he just told me just yesterday, it's the best. It, that was better than his entire civics class in high school. Was just going through that little book, six little one hour or two hour and a half meetings. Mm -hmm. Or shame on our school system, brother Steve. Hey, I'm a product of the public school, buddy. You better be nice to me. I'm guilty, too. I'm guilty, too. <laughs> We're all guilty. Will you join with us, folks? Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. God bless you, families. You serve our gracious God all through this week. Thank you for being here today. Happy Father's Day, guys. Trials dark on every hand, and we cannot understand all the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land but he'll guide us with his eye and we'll follow till we die we will understand it better by and by oh by and by when the morning comes 
When the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. You know that one? <laughs> Oft our cherished plans have failed, disappointments have prevailed, and we wandered in the darkness, heavy hearted and alone. But we're trusting in the Lord, and according to His word, we will understand it better by and by. Oh, by. saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we will overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Do you ever make any albums? Uh, back in the day. Did you? Yeah. But